kind of what we were just talking about. So I guess we kind of covered it. So. <laughs> See you. No, um, I'm just going to talk mainly. I want to do this from like a real small business standpoint, just to give you an idea of what I do on a regular basis. I'll build a website for somebody, and and I'll say, okay, I'll maintain that. I'm not. These are not actual numbers. So you hold me later. I'm just using fake numbers, but I'll be like. Oh, okay, well, maintenance is like 200 a week or 200 a month. And then I'll be like, but I'll take care of your content for this much. And I'll take care of your content for 300, 400. I'll post your blogs. I'll take care of your social media for another, you know, 200. So for me, that's been a way to kind of upsell my, my monthly clients and give them more value. And um, even though it is difficult to be like the best at everything, it's impossible. You can still give like a small business model a lot more for their their money, you know, then they could get with like an agency, for example. So that's kind of the reason I'm saying that is, is, is everything I'm telling you now is working out of a business model that's kind of like that. If you're, if you are like a really big business, you might want to get somebody who just like specializes in these particular things because there's no way you're going to be as good at SEO as a WordPress developer, somebody who does it 24 seven. That being said, let's start. Okay. Um, this is a little quote I made, it's probably misspelled. Optimization has gotten quite popular in recent years with all the new self-help tech books. With how tempting the lure of having robots doing all your work can be, one must be careful to take a step back and ask, is this a task that needs to be optimized? I actually meant to write, write automated. Is this a task that needs to be automated? We could all benefit from automation. Um, <laughs> And we all have areas of our life that may need to be automated too. I think the automatic word replace um, was in there. Um, it's ironic because I'm talking about op uh, automation, and I have an actual automation error in the paragraph. Um, it's just like real 4D. Um, so, but basically, what I'm what I'm saying here is. I see a lot of people automating, and this goes great with what Jim was saying, because it's something that we just want to do because we want to be more and more and more efficient. But ultimately, um, um, you know, automation is less flexible. Robots are not going to be as adaptive as actual human beings. Um, for example, I have a client who sends out an email like once every two years, but they keep getting on me about automating like their email integration system. And I'm like, bro, it catches the email, like, you, you know, you're using Zoho one year and MailChimp the next, like, it, it doesn't, it's really impractical to set up an automated system for something you're only doing, like, every couple years. It makes more sense just to do it when it comes up, you know? So that's kind of a disclaimer and something to think about, because I do see a lot of people go off about autom auto, uh, automation. And I do want to say real quick, when we go to, like, word caps and stuff, a lot of the people who are speaking are huge like businesses like Bluehost and GoDaddy, and they give us their information about how they run their company. And a lot of people listen to that info and they think, oh my gosh, you know, like I gotta do all the stuff GoDaddy is doing. And it's like nothing could be further from the truth. You know, they do, there's a lot of value in knowing how their business works. But at the same time, you know, like um, uh, hot mapping and uh, A B testing, if you don't, have a certain level of like exposure, they're, in my opinion, useless. So this is some of the things I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to be talking really fast. I'm going to go over some plugins that kind of um, create um, content in your site kind of automatically um, in a very passive way. This isn't something I do from my site, but I do this kind of thing on a lot of client sites. I'm going to talk about concepts, which are, is basically the same idea as plugins, but the plugins don't actually exist. They're hypothetical, or I created custom code in order to fulfill that, um, you know, need. Uh, using social media itself um, to kind of up your automation um, in WordPress, and I'm talking specifically about like admin jobs, like in the dashboard. Um, and then I'm gonna, I have a bunch of stuff to watch out for. Um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about browser extensions, even though that's kind of not. WordPress so much, and then I'm going to talk about outsourcing, which I feel is a form of automation. We can debate about that later if you want. Okay, so um, 
WordPress plugins. I got a bunch here that I feel are a form of automation. Um, you obviously want the MailChimp plugin to capture emails. I don't really need to talk too much about that, but email marketing is number one. So always make sure you have something passively acquiring email addresses. Um, MailChimp for WooCommerce, um, similar concept. Whenever you get orders on your WooCommerce site, I manage about 10 WooCommerce sites. You want to be able to track all of their um, all of the emails that you get so that you can uh, remarket to those people. Uh, the, the actual plugin that does that, is, that I use, is called MailChimp for WooCommerce. Um, WooCommerce Google Analyst, Analytics Integration is another, this is an actual plugin, that's the name of the plugin. It kind of just sets up all your conversion measuring tools automatically. You used to have to do this manually back in the day. Uh, it took a lot of time, took an expensive developer, um, but nowadays you can just plug that plugin in or fork it or do whatever you want to do and uh, it'll measure your conversions. It'll tell you where they're coming from, whether they're coming from Facebook, whether they're coming from organic SEO, yada, yada, yada. Um, we always want um, ways for uh, viewers to share your site, like Shareaholic and add to any. Uh, I use uh, both depending on kind of the brand, but those are two really good plugins for that. Um, Jim talked real quick about having the Instagram feed on your site. Instagram feed is a plugin I use quite a bit, probably more than any other social media plugin. Um, what it does is it just kind of lays your feed right on your site. There are other ways to do it, but as core kind of changes, I found I didn't really care to update it, and I'd rather just let these guys do it for me, so I, <coughs> I think that's a great plugin. Um, the reason I'm kind of getting into that now is this is supposed to be about SEO, right? Well, the Instagram feed is, it actually brings in like the images from your Instagram and then it converts whatever your first, whatever the text is on your first, on your post, it converts it into like your alt tag. So you're actually making keyword searchable words into your site that are changing, I would dare say even kind of organically um, so that that content is now searchable. And it will also come up on Google uh, Images as well. So having that happen, I found that I get a little bit better in the SEO like SERP scores. Um, it's, it's kind of debatable, but most people generally believe in SEO that if you have like incremental updates occurring on your site on a regular basis, it's gonna be beneficial for your SEO. And this is, in essence, a way to automate that because um, people will be posting in to Instagram for you know whatever the website is for, whatever affiliated organization. They'll be posting anyways, so it'll be constantly adding like incremental changes onto their front page or wherever you put the feed. Um, I, I actually, on occasion, I use uh, WordPress Reviews Bundle. Um, Great plugin. Uh, if you guys don't know, a lot of the WordPress guys uh, are here. <laughs> and uh, what this what this plugin does is that you can feed your reviews from social media right into your uh, site. And the reason that's beneficial, again, is because you're adding text content to your site that's getting updated individually on a real organic basis. So it almost like tricks Google into thinking that somebody's updating the site even though they're not. Um, there are some stuff you gotta watch out for depending on your brand. Uh, like for me, I, I work, one of my biggest clients is a law firm, and I don't think I would use this because the quality of the writing is a little bit too casual, uh, to say the least. But an example of businesses where I've used it to um, my advantage are, like I used to uh, maintain a site for a paddle boarding school stand-up paddle boarding school, so the casual language is not, you know, very detrimental to the brand of the business, and that's a great example of where you can use something like that. And uh, you can do, like, there are more, right, Devin? There's, like, yeah, we're actually working on a whole platform for that, so they're all going to be bundled together. TripAdvisor. Yeah. There's so many reviews sites out there. Like Zomato is a big one in Europe. Yeah, Open so. Open tables coming up with reviews. Yeah. So having these on your site, if you want to, I'm sure you can ask uh, Devin or whoever else is here. 
Okay, so this is like stuff that I've done with my own custom coding, whether I built a plugin or not. Um, uh, my friend for a while had a Facebook's comment plugin that he no longer updates because Facebook changed their API, but uh, there are ways to do that kind of yourself if you want to put a little bit more code into it. Um, but basically what the plugin did is it, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, what the plugin did is it kind of, uh, it uh, basically imported all your Facebook comments as comments natively into your site. And um, you might say like that, that brings about a danger of duplicate content. It's really not an issue uh, with Facebook comments because comments are so low weight to begin with. Um, but it does create like an incremental change and a searchable kind of content on your site, uh, which is, is more beneficial, I would say, on blogs than it is on, um, on like your front page. Uh, and then same kind of deals, Twitter integration, Pinterest integration, these are kind of ways to just kind of keep things like rolling uh, when you're not looking. These are really forms of automation at the bottom here, but I use time management software and project management software just to kind of uh, stay on task. I Mainly the reason I'm pointing that out is I want to measure how much time I'm putting into setting up my different forms of automation, like how many times I'm in the if this and then that dashboard. And I have to weigh that against how long it takes to actually do the task over and over again. And sometimes it turns out where, you know, it's not really beneficial to automate. Can you tell us which time management software you Well, mine is in an actual plugin. It's it's uh, about time, which is a Mac one. And I don't think it's a, uh, I don't even know if it's available anymore. I went looking for it before this, um, and I couldn't find it, but I still have it installed on my Mac. But that's really, I don't use it regularly because it's a little bit strenuous, but I do use it like on a given day to see like where my time's going, like what application I'm on. Um, this is just some general social media advice. Uh, just real quick, this isn't really having to do with automation, but um, it does have to kind of discourage you from using automation. Uh, I, I always encourage people to, you know, focus on one social media when they're getting started and kind of master that and once they've kind of gotten really comfortable with that i'd say like okay maybe now bring in the next so that is my general advice if you want to if you want to talk about that more let's talk after um hootsuite is pretty much the go-to automation social media software i don't actually use it anymore but if you want to play around with it um, if there's a lot of benefits to it uh schedule down is something i use as well i have like the platinum membership or whatever and it's uh it, it basically automatically posts to Instagram. Um, I spend maybe for a given client about two hours a month just kind of setting up all their content to post daily for a whole month, and then I'm done. So if you're a WordPress guy and you don't want to spend a lot of time on Instagram, schedule ground is great. It does cost a little bit of money, though. Um, there are other forms of Instagram automation. In Brevity, I just want to say that I don't really encourage um, botting. It, there are benefits, but for the most part, I would say just kind of stay away from it. Uh, a lot of people losing their social media accounts and whatnot. Uh, and for Facebook, when I post, he actually mentioned this. I tend to post. Um, uh, I don't. I don't prefer to use automation for Facebook posting. Uh, one argument I make for it is that you can actually set up your page boost when you post. Um, and I'm really big about boosting quality content. And um, so for me, I found the best effect and the most engagement if you just. Uh, input your Facebook post individually. Uh, this is just kind of stuff to watch out for. Uh, that's why I use like the Manage Time software. You can really kind of, you know, like watch out for social media, watch out for overkilling it on the automation. I see a lot of people doing that. Um, watch out. Uh, this isn't something to actually watch out for, but I use automated email replies, so I only have to check email once or twice a day. Um, that's really helpful because, you know, no one wants to be checking their email all the day. And I turned off all my Facebook notifications pretty much, except for advanced WordPress. So make sure you leave that one on. Um, these are just some examples of uh, things in WordPress that I use. Uh, Manage WP, most of you know what that is. If you don't, I don't really want to talk about that, but I'll talk about it after. Um, it's almost, 
it's not technically automation, but building a site that doesn't break is kind of its own form of automation because it lasts and it keeps working for you without you having to interact with it. Um, and also some, uh, some people do like automatic core updates. If you have a really simple site that doesn't have a lot of functions, it's like for maybe like your grandma's crochet business or something, that might be a good way to go. Kind of save you time having to go back and update that. Uh, these are just some browser extensions I use. About time isn't a browser extension, it's an application, but uh, Momentum Dash it basically makes it so your um, browser default window is just like a photograph and instead of like a bunch of pictures of things that you visited before that you're most likely going to click once in a while and it would distract you, it distracts me. Grammarly is a grammar application that I clearly didn't use in this presentation because I, I, I did this on my laptop. Um, it's on my desktop. And uh, ScreenStot ex extension is huge. I use that every time I'm sending clients like updated versions of their sites that I'm building out on my um, local WordPress uh, like development, you know, staging, whatever. And uh, Google Rank, which is an SEO optimization kind of audit extension. Um, I outsource quite a bit. Uh, I'm almost hesitant to say this, but I use 99designs for logos pretty much, and then I'll like clean up the 99design stuff just because it saves me more time. I use Fiverr on occasion, maybe like once every two months. Uh, I believe hiring people is a form of automation, so this is the same kind of principles you apply to automation, I would apply to hiring someone or hiring a service. You know, it's kind of, you have to weigh whether or not it works for you. Um, and in all occurrences, be thoughtful, but don't expect perfection. Okay.